Okay, class, today we are going to talk about degrees, which is a way to measure an angle, and another way to measure an angle, which is radians. It's equivalent to having measures of length in centimeters or inches, just two different ways of measuring a length. Well, there's two different ways of measuring an angle. We've only done degrees so far, but trigonometry is all about the other way, which is radians. So we're going to learn the relationship between degrees and radians, how to convert between degrees and radians using dimensional analysis, and then go through similar aspects like complementary, supplementary, and coterminal that we did in degrees already, um, and then we're going to learn about DMS, degrees, minutes, and seconds, which is just a way to fine-tune um, measuring of an angle. So we're going to start off with what is a radian. So the formal definition of a radian is the measure of a, of a central angle theta that intercepts an arc S equal in length to the radius of the radius R of the circle. So here is an angle measurement. Okay, so this is my angle S. So what it says is one radian, which is one, um, this is going to be one radian. If my radius, which is this red line, and equals the arc length out here. So if I opened up my angle, the amount of the radius R, so that my arc length equals my R, so I have this distance, right? This arc length is equivalent to here. Um, then that's one radian. So we would abbreviate one rad. So going around the circle, this would be one radian. This would be two radians. So this would be another length of length R. So imagine laying a piece of string from the center to where it meets the circle and taking that string and bending it across. This string, if I then again do it here, then this again, it would be one, two radians. And if I open it another, that would be all the way measuring from the initial side here, that initial red line, all the way out to this third line, that would be three radians all the way out there. So this is three radians two radians, and out here would be one radian, okay? So we know that halfway around the circle, right, so my initial side and my terminal side here, then I swooped out a semicircle, which we know that's 180 degrees, and it's close to three radians. Well, there is a special number that we know about that's really close to the number three, um, and it's related to the circumference of the circle. If you remember, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r, and if the radius is 1, the circumference of the circle would be 2 pi times 1, so 2 pi. So, essentially, the number of radians halfway around the circle is pi radians, and if I open a full circle, that would be a half circle, and another half circle, that would be 2 pi radians. And in fact, um, 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians, and 360 degrees is equivalent to 2 pi radians. So we say rad, we write rad. Okay, so the measure of an angle is determined by the amount of rotation from the initial side to the terminal side. And one way to measure an angle is in degrees, and the other is in, as I mentioned, radians. And we have these conversion factors, which I wrote down on the previous slide, which are two things you just are going to need to memorize at this point. Um, and this is the basis for this unit. Okay, so we're going to convert. So we're going to convert 7 pi over 6 to degrees. So there is no degree symbol, so it's implied that it's radians. So we see 275, we have a degree symbol. So I know that's degrees. Okay, here's 3. There's no degree symbol here, so it's 3 radians. And we're going to convert that to degrees. So there's no degree symbol and there's the pi, so I know that this is radians, and we're going to convert it to degrees, and we're going to use dimensional analysis. Dimensional analysis is required, um, and we're going to use two pi radians is 180 degrees. Now I'm going to write out the units for my dimensional analysis so I can see things cancel. So I have 7 pi over 6 radians, 
and I'm going to multiply it by the fraction that contains these two pieces. Because I have radians in the numerator, I'm going to put uh, my conversion factor radians in the denominator. So pi radians, and that's equivalent to 180 degrees. So my radians cancel, and you can just do 7 times 180 divided by 6, or without a calculator, 6 goes into 180 30 times. 30 times 7 is 210, and then my pi cancels with my pi, so this is equivalent to 210 degrees. So I'm going to do it the other way, 275 degrees, 2 radians, so 275 degrees. I'm going to write it as a fraction over 1, and then multiply it by another fraction. So this time I'm going to put 180 degrees on the bottom, because here I have degrees on the top, and I want um, them to cancel, and 1 on top cancels with 1 on bottom. And 180 degrees is equivalent to pi radians, and you have to write equivalent things on top of each other for dimensional analysis to work. Um, so if I multiply 275, uh, well, I'd take it and divide by 180, and then just simplify that fraction on your calculator. And if you're not comfortable um, on how to use your calculator to re reduce your fraction, um, please ask in class, but this is equivalent to 55 over 36 pi radians. Okay, And you can just write 55 pi over 36. You can write it as 55 pi over 36, or you can write it 55 over 36 pi. The only thing you can't do is put the pi attach it to the 36 in the denominator. So it either be needs to be in the numerator or kind of in the middle. You don't have to write the radians if you have an angle measurement and it doesn't have the degree symbol, it's implied that it's in radians. Okay, so here we're going to convert three radians to degrees. So I have three radians over one and I'm going to put 180 degrees on top and pi radians on the bottom so that the radians cancel. And I have 3 times 180 divided by pi. When you report um, angle measurements in degrees, it's typical to have a whole number or a decimal part. Um, we don't typically include a pi if we're using degree units. So here I am going to convert this to a decimal and I'm going to round to four decimal places. So it's 171.8873 degrees and I do need to have the degree symbol. So here I just do 3 times 180 divided by pi and I get that out. Okay, so we're going to talk about complementary and supplementary. So complementary is two positive angles whose sum is 90 degrees. Um, and I said 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. Because remember, if you have pi radians is 180 degrees. And I this is an e equation. It has an equal sign. So I can divide both sides of an equation by 2. So pi over 2 is equivalent to 180 over 2, or 90 degrees. So if complementary angle sums to be 90, in radians it sums to be pi over 2. So I want two angle measurements that sum to be pi over 2. One of my angle measurements is pi over 8. Well, if I want to do my addition with my fractions, think you have 1 eighth and 1 half, well I would have to convert them both into eighths. So 1 half is if I uh, multiply this by 4 over 4, so I have a common denominator. This is 4 pi over 8. So pi over 8 plus what gives you 4 pi over 8? Well, it's 3 pi over 8. 1 pi over 8 plus 3 pi over 8 gives you 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. So the complement of pi over 2 is 3 pi over 8. And that's my final answer. Supplementary, two positive angles whose sum is 180 degrees or equivalently pi radians. So I have one of my angles is 2 pi over 3 plus what is pi? Well again, I have a fraction. Think of it as 2 thirds plus how many thirds gives you 3 thirds. Because, right, 3 thirds is equivalent to pi. Right? Just writing it as a common denominator fraction. So 2 thirds plus 1 pi over 3 it gives you 3 pi over 3, or pi. So the complement, or sorry, the supplement of 2 pi over 3 
is pi over 3, is the supplement. Okay, so now we're going to talk about coterminal angles. We talked about this in degrees. Now we're going to talk about this in radians. When your problem is given to you in radians, your answer should be in radians. So I'm just going to draw this out. And I'm going to, because this is in 6, I'm going to take my half circle here. That's my half circle. Let me just make this look more even. And I'm going to split it into 6, because this is pi. And I want to know what is 5, 6 pi. Well, it's 5, 6 of the way to pi. So if I split it up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I can count 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6. So my initial side is this positive x-axis. My terminal side is here. This is 5 pi over 6. Okay, so that's 5 pi over 6. So I want a coterminal angle, which means essentially it has to start and stop at the same place. They have the same initial side and the same terminal side. So I'm going to start at the same initial side here, but I'm going to go the negative direction. And negative angles and radians works the same as it did in degrees. So how many did I go around? Well, one full circle is 2 pi. If I go 5 pi over 6 this way, I went the remainder of it that way. So I can just take one full circle, which is 2 pi, and subtract 5 pi over 6, finding common denominator. Another way is splitting it up the bottom half into 6 also, because it was given to a problem in 6. And we can count how many 6 are we going backwards. 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6, 3 pi over 6, 4 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, and then ending all the way there, 7 pi over 6. So if I switch to a highlighter, if I start at this initial side and go around here and end at the same terminal side, I've gone around 7 pi over 6. So one angle, a, a negative angle that's coterminal 5 pi over 6 is negative 7 pi over 6 because I went in the negative direction, which is the clockwise, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 6. So then we can find a positive angle, which was the other thing we were asked to do. So I'm going to switch to a purple highlighter, which is equivalent to going one way around the circle, which is 2 pi, plus 5 pi over 6 more. Then I've started and ended at the same place. So to do that, we can simply add, we went around one full circle plus 5 pi over 6 more. Right? We started, we went all the way around plus 5 pi over 6 more. We started and ended on the same spot, so they are going to be coterminal. So to add these, since it's in 6s, I have to um, have a denominator of 6, so this becomes 12 over 6. 12 pi over 6 is equivalent to 2 pi. 12 pi over 6 plus 5 pi over 6 is 17 pi over 6. So those are two answers. There's actually an infinite number of correct answers because you could go around 2 times plus 5 pi over 6 or um, 2 pi plus 5 pi over 6 to get your answer. So you keep adding and subtracting 2 pi. Okay, so lastly I want to talk about degrees, minutes, and seconds. So it's just a way of subdividing an angle. Okay, so a degree. So um, you can find these things by hand using one minute is one sixtieth of a degree, and this is the notation, or one second, that notation is one three hundred and sixtieth of a degree. So we're going to convert this to decimal using a calculator. So I'm going to show you the calculator steps. Okay, so on your calculator, here are the steps. You do 35, press the second button, angle, and then option one. And then option two would give you the minute symbol. Um, seconds, however, you have to use the alpha button, which is located next to your second key, and then the plus, like where you add, and press enter. And that's how you get the seconds. So the equivalent after you press enter would be 35.7603 degrees. So you can write in DMS and you can get it in degrees. And you can um, 
transfer it back and forth doing these conversions. And I'll show you in class if you have any trouble locating these buttons. Have a good night.